brethren, can we stand up at this time and turn to number 51 as we invite Brother Ashley to come. We'll sing that lovely hymn, brethren, We Are Standing on Holy Ground. And in brethren, there are angels all around. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all time now. Thank you for this opportunity of standing in your presence with your vindicated word before us. The statements, the quotes, the things that were spoken by your prophet messenger. May the angels overshadow us this morning. May the great Holy Spirit enlighten us. We commit this service into your hands and pray thy will be done. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And you may be seated. All right. It's so good to have Sister Linda back with us this morning. We sure missed her. The little group has, has grown a little bit smaller with so many obstacles and things that are taking place. Sister Rachel is still in hospital. I believe she's in great pain. And When you bow before the king, do mention her name in prayer. For the Bible calls us to pray one for another. And in the midst of all the pressures and upheaval and things that are taking place, we pressing on the upward way. Here we go into Mystery Invisible Union number 11, a little series that We are studying together. And we come here on a Sunday, just a handful of people to put on record the things that we believe. And the little text this morning is, his word, she never doubts it. Now we know this morning his word is the ultimate. And the great messenger of the end time said, 
You only need one thing to take the rapture, and that's the word. Not good works. Not anything that you can achieve by yourself. You need the word to take the rapture with it. So let us stand and read the word, Acts 2, 12 to 16. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? And others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. (coughs) But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoke by the prophet Joel. God bless you. You may be seated. This portion of scripture has been read many, many, many times. Peter. Standing up with the eleven. He was one of them. Amen. He had identified something in the word. He had noticed a prophecy that had been given. Amen. He had picked out something with his mortal eyes. And all the people that dwelled in Judea and and the inhabitants of Jerusalem should have known what was taking place. It was a great era that they had been living in. Jesus of Nazareth had been crucified. And he said, I will come again. And it is need for me to go because if I go not, then I cannot send the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, upon you. And Peter had dug into the Word and caught the revelation. God help us this morning to dig into His Word. And may the Holy Spirit give us this morning a portion of revelation. Amen. Number one, watch. Oh, these quotes are rich. He shows her his word of life. He shows her. Not the pastor now. (laughs) Yeah, not the, the guru. He shows her. And she receives it. She never doubts it. We are speaking of the bride of Christ. And number two, now you're going to have to read between the lines. All right, so you're going to catch a word here and and maybe the word means something a little bit different to what the average person is, is soaking in. Now you're going to have to read between the lines. Now you know the Bible is written. Oh, watch this. The message... Amen. Is not altogether on the letter. Amen. But it's between the lines. Did you know that? So this message we've been preaching, we've been believing, we've been rejoicing in, we've been talking about. It's not altogether right on the letter. <laughs> Amen. Okay. It's going to confuse some people. It's going to make some people ask many questions. It's going to shake people. It's not going to make sense to others. Because it's not altogether right on the letter. Number three. 
And the Bible is written, look at this now, so that the educated and smart can never understand it. Number four. And I hope you're reading between the lines what I'm meaning. Oh my. Number five. <coughs> you have to read between the lines. See what it means. God said, it's hid from the eyes of the wise and the prudent and revealed it to babes such as will learn. He shows her, amen, and she receives it. She never doubts it. Now look at number six, amen. Now God hides his message between the lines. The seminary will never know it. The same time message is only for a Pacific group of people. Amen. The elected and the predestinated. God hides his message. See? The seals have an element of mystery to them. And there are things that are hidden in the seals that the seminars will know nothing about. Is that right? So let's have a look at a few things. Number seven. He leaves the throne. He leaves the throne of to be an intercessor as a slain lamb to be a lion. King! The seminars will know nothing about that. He leaves the throne to be an intercessor as a slain lamb to be a lion. King! To bring the world to judgment who has rejected his message. What is his message? He's not a mediator. Oh, did that, did that go in? <laughs> he shows her. Amen. And she receives it. She never doubts it. There it is, brother. He's not a mediator. That's in the message. It's something the seminary will know nothing about. Today, the churches reject, not the prophet now, <laughs> they reject the message. Number eight, and in that fine, educated, smart, intelligent race of people, God sent a message so humble that it just stumbled them right down to the bottom. They refused it and rejected it. And God's justice required judgment that they rejected his message. And he condemned the world and sunk it beneath the earth by a flood and saved Noah the righteous. Who's the righteous? Who believed by a simple little message that God gave. <coughs> All right. Focus on the message this morning. Number nine, Noah was a prophet anointed of God, sent of God with a message from God. 
And he gave the people a warning before the judgment come. And they snickered and laughed and made fun of it and scoffed. The whole world system fell apart in that day and they drowned beneath the seas. That's right. Why? They rejected (coughs) the message of the hour. Okay? He said, don't reject God's message. We know this morning Laodicea is prophesied to do just that. Blind, wretched, and naked. They are prophesied to reject the message of the hour. What's the message of the hour? It's his coming. Amen. The message tells me, brother, that the mercy seat has become a judgment seat. The message tells me that the lamb, hallelujah, has become a lion. But it's written between the lines. Amen. The message tells me we are in the hour of judgment. Seminars will never get it. Oh, look at number 10. Hallelujah. Oh, there's angels all around. And there's only one can rightfully interpret this book, and that's the Holy Spirit. Amen? He's the writer of it. I went west for the blast, come back east with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, interpreting the unwritten word. It's between the lines. Amen. And it's the only one that can really interpret. No matter how well we think we know it, we don't know it until the Holy Spirit has revealed it. Because it's all a mystery. Look, look, look at this line. It's cut up in mysteries. That's the anti message, amen. It's cut up in mysteries. Oh my. Oh yeah. Number 11, look, look, look. Now the coming of the Lord is in mystery. Amen? A high mystery cloud hung over the Arizona desert in 1963. Scientists looked in amazement. Church leaders, seminars will never get it. But the Holy Spirit said, it's our Lord up there. There he is with them angels. Come on, it's worth coming to church, amen? Amen. Number 12, look at this one. What if the rapture come and he took two from Tucson and one from Phoenix and around the world as a universal rapture will be? The one that rises from the dead will go to meet him in the air and steal away. Remember, it's an invisible happening. Amen. Remember last week's message, you have to be changed in order to receive the promised son. A mysterious thing. Oh yeah. The seminary will never know it. It's hid from them. Unless God opens their eyes, they'll never see it. Number 13, 1958, he's revealing himself now to the church for mercy. The next time he reveals himself is in destruction 
to those who rejected the prophet? No. The message. Amen. Now here's the one that I want you to really look at this morning. Read it carefully with me. The end time message shall reveal it. The last church age. Glory. Whew, he said. I think he saw something deep in what he had just stated. The end time message shall reveal it. He said, there you are. Oh my, it shakes me to think of it. The mystery, the things that the church world bats their eye and says, it's a nonsense. Amen. The end time message will reveal it. Amen. The church says, the second coming history, a nonsense. But the end time message will reveal it. Amen? Amen? Yes. The mercy seat and the judgment seat, that is a nonsense. Who says it? Not the prostitute down the road, not the drunkard in the bar room, the church, amen. The church says it is nonsense. There's no more intercession. Oh, the church has been raptured. What does the church say? That's a nonsense. But the end time message shall reveal it. Amen. You're getting somewhere now? Right. He shows her and she receives it. She never doubts it. God has called, God has to call out and trained men, God trained men to carry this message. And they don't care what the opposition is. Amen. It's contrary to all the other messages. It's contrary to all the churches. They meet with fierce resistance. They repudiate it. There's no cooperation nowhere. There's no interest. There's no support. But God trained men will carry this message. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Number 16. So you see denominations O-U-T out. That's right. It's going to be an elect people that's elected for it. Oh, I like that. And they're as solid as a rock. Amen. They've been predestinated to receive the end time message. A predestinated bride of Christ will carry this message until God says enough is enough. Oh my, number 17. But he promised to have something here for us in that day that we wouldn't be deceived. And that's the word. And Christ make and Christ to make it manifest to us. Number 18, the coming of a prophet is a sign that's overlooked by the people Every time they overlook it. See? If God sent a, a prophet and he was speechless, it would be non effective. But when God sends a prophet with a message, that's a different thing. Who sent the prophet? God. Who sent the message? God. Amen. A prophet without a message is of no effect. 
and the message is what they overlook. Amen. They never get it somehow, lest it's those who are got their eyes open to see it, those who are elected to see it, does see it. The rest of them fail to see the message. Number 19, how could the elected keep from seeing it because they're elected to see it? Doesn't that make you feel secure this morning? The thing is closed. The lamb has taken the book. Redemption is over. You cannot see that unless you are elected to see it because it's between the lines. It's hid from the wise and the prudent. Amen. He shows her, hallelujah, she receives it. She never doubts it. Number 20, a denomination won't see these truths. You'll take an individual person that can see God and look at his word and believe it and belong to no organization, but live for God, not for his organization of intellectual wisdom of some bishop or something that has been taught them. That's right. Number 21, my message, that's truly an adulterated gospel and scripture. And the people have to reject it to fulfill the word. Oh my. See, see, it's got to be rejected, brother. It must be cast out. It must be unwanted. It must be repudiated. If you are carrying a message this morning and all the people are rallying around you, you've got the wrong message. Amen. It's got to be a rejected message carried by God. Trained men, men, although no matter what he does, they still won't believe the Bible said that though he had done so many miracles among them, yet they could not believe it because Isaiah said they've got eyes and can't see, ears and can't hear, that they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and be converted. Oh, we're living in a wonderful time for the believer. And we're living in a terrible time for the unbeliever because he's rejected. The next time he reveals himself is in destruction. All right, this next page. Let's go slowly on this page. Number 22 number 23 and number 24 all right let's let it sink way down deep this morning let's reach out and touch the lord as he passes by amen, amen. let's give ear unto the spirit should he wish to speak to us through these next three quotes oh let's bow our heads in earnest this morning as we read together let's go deep Watch this now. Watch. 22. We dealt with this last week. But he changed their body in such a way that they could receive the Son. Right? And now we find the next thing in order for the church now is a changed body. See how that message went forth last week? See, Not this flesh body, sister. <laughs> no, brother, it has nothing to do with the rapture. It has nothing to do with receiving the promised son. He changed the spiritual body, the inner man, the real you. Let's read it again. But he changed their body in such a way that they could receive the son. And now we find the next thing in order for the church now is a changed body. Not, 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 not us old people go back to be young so much. But we will, and we will be there young just as certain. But listen, 
We've got to have a changed body. Amen. In order to receive the Son. Because we're going to meet him in the air. The rapture will come in a twinkling of an eye. He said the rapture will take place and nobody will know anything about it. We're going to go deep into this. Amen. We're going to go very, very, very deep into this. Number 23, but to the church, the bride, the rapture is a revelation to her. It's revealed to her that the revelation, the true bride of Christ will be waiting for that revelation of the rapture. Okay? He shows her. He's the only one that can do it. He shows her. Not the pastor, the priest, the pope or anybody out there. He shows her and she receives it and she never doubts it. Amen. He said, let's requote and let's requote and let's requote. Let me requote another quote that I quoted this morning and let's put our big eagle wings out and hover over this quote all the time. Let's read it. Number 24. <laughs> the end time message shall reveal it the last church age glory Whew. there you are oh my it shakes me to think of it the mystery the things that the church would bat their eyes and say it's nonsense See? See, if they don't say that about what you believe you believe in the wrong thing it's nonsense the mystery of who Jesus Christ was, not the third person, not the second person, not the third person, but the person. And all these other mysteries, God will be revealed because it's wrote here in the book and be revealed to the end time generation. Oh my, he said, behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. Down on the river, what did he say? I send you with, 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 with a message. Amen. He said the message is the heart of the whole thing. Amen. The revelation is in the message. You wouldn't know who Elijah was without the message. Amen. Number 25. They can no more see it in seminaries and schools and denominations than the Jews could see Jesus being the Messiah. No wonder they try to think you're crazy. No wonder they think you're foolish. No wonder they can't understand why you don't cluck up with them. Because there's a power and a vision behind it. A word of God that's been revealed to get the church in order for the rapture and the going away. The end time message shall reveal it. All right, number six. We read this one many, many times. We know it off by heart virtually. See? I want you to read each word with me. Watch this carefully. You need the word to take the rapture with it. You don't need some credential. You don't need some long history of some school to be healed this morning. You need to read the word that does it. No. I made a mistake there. Big mistake. I'm going to make another one. You need to listen to the word that does it. Still wrong. Let's read it the way he said it. You need to accept, amen, the word that does it. Amen? That's 100% right. Any preacher can read the word, won't do a thing. Amen? Any congregation can listen to the word, it won't do a thing. But they have to accept the word that 
does it. Amen? The seventh angel is on earth at the time of this coming. You could read that a million times. It won't do a thing. But if you accept it, amen, it'll rip you out of Laodicea. Oh yeah, amen. It'll rapture you up out of the seventh age. You have to accept the word. That does it. You can go home and rejoice this week. Amen. Amen and amen. You need to accept the word. That does it. How many preachers read the word week after week and it is ineffective to himself and the people. But oh brother, when you accept the word, it takes you into a raptured condition. Amen. It'll take you right out of the Laodicean age. Number 27. I believe that the bride will be called out. Look at that. During that time, I believe there will be some in the last days that won't have to taste death. Yeah? Well, Brother Ashley, I'm not going to (laughs) die. Oh, brother, that's not the death he's talking about. (laughs) I believe there will be some in the last days won't have to taste death, but will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Every one of us sitting in the meeting this morning, one day our heart will stop beating. Amen. That's right. Every one of us that are sitting in the meeting this morning will take our final breath. We will die. Amen. Hebrews 9, 27. And it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. But he says, I believe there are some in the last days that won't have to taste death. What death is he talking about? Let's read number 28. The whole world has been plunged to a spiritual, a denominational death. The whole church, she's D-E-A-D, dead. Amen? I believe there's some in the last days won't have to taste death. Amen. Oh my. Number 21, 29. Now it's the seventh church age that takes the rapture. All of the other six died, but Enoch was translated because he was not found. God took him, but Enoch raptured. Was a type of all the rest of them dying, but the end time bride will be called out of the rapturing without death, will be called out of the seventh church age. It's the spiritual body that goes in the rapture. Amen. We have to be changed in order to receive the promised son. We are now bearing record of that age. Oh my, let's dig deep. Let's dig in now real deep. See, see, the end time message will reveal it. Amen. All right, number 30. Christ leaves the sanctuary. His days of meditorial is over. When? When the rapture comes. He leaves from the sanctuary, goes forth to take the book of redemption and claims everything is redeemed. There's no more meditorial work. How many understand that? Amen. Brother, that is between the lines. Amen. And only the Holy Spirit can give you understanding. He shows her and she receives it. She never doubts it. Look at number 31. But his mystery, hallelujah, is only revealed to his beloved bride. 
that's the only one could see it. Can you see why it's hidden between the lines? The end time message will reveal it. Oh my, number 32. It's the Holy Spirit coming down to quicken. Make alive those people that foreordained of God to be in the rapture. Oh, that is, that is, if he's a true eagle, he will understand the message of the hour if he's a true eagle. Amen. He will understand the rapture is a change of the body in order to receive the promised son. Number 33, they can't understand how a simple message, a simple people, to reject a thing like that would cause them to go into chaos. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe the church has been raptured. I don't believe this is the judgment hour. I don't believe the Lamb has taken the book. I don't believe the seventh seal has been opened. I don't believe that was our Lord up there. And that threw the whole world into chaos. Amen. Number 34. Now there it is, scientifically proof that it's the truth. So therefore we don't worry whether... We don't worry about whether it's the truth. Both scientifically and spiritually and what was said has come to pass. So the message of the seven seals in their closing, that's the message of the entire Bible. The seven seals closes the New Testament and sealed it up. That is true. Now we know that is by prophetic utterance, by scientific and by the word. Three has given witness to it. That it's the truth. He shows her and she receives it. She never doubts it. Amen. Number 35. You know the devil just wants to see what he can do to throw everything in your way that he can to keep you from seeing Jesus. He'll tell you that a bunch of holy rollers. They'll tell you that a bunch of idiots. He'll say there's nothing to them. They're just a poor trash of the city. Anything he can do. But if you're determined to see him, God will make a way for you to see him. Just keep that in your mind. Something will take place. If that hunger begins to break in your heart, something, you'll go to see him. Anyhow, amen, to see Jesus himself in the skies. Amen. Saying that in Revelations 10, 1 to 7, the message will reveal the whole thing. Oh, my. Look at number 36. Neither does any message that forwards the people on ever coincide with a past message. It will not do it. This message we have cannot coincide with the Pentecostal message. It's a different message. The seals are now open. The mystery has been revealed. Amen. Number 37, we never go back, but we go forward when you're born again. That's why I think today we have so many rather genuine, not so many rather genuine new births is because the seed maybe will sympathize with the word of the person, but they don't want to rot away from the old system that they were in. They don't want to come out of it. They want to cling. Amen. They want to stay in the old system and claim the new birth or the message of the age. Oh, that's a deep one. Number 38. How will he take his bride? By the word. Amen. 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 Oh, how will he take 
his bride by the end time message. It is the complete revelation of the seals. He shows her and she receives it. She never doubts it. Number 39. God has separated us from all the dead religions. I'm speaking across the nation now. All dead creeds. Into what? Separated us and opened us a new land, a new message for this day. You need the word to take the rapture with it. Amen. You have to accept the word that does it. Amen. Number 40, oh hallelujah, and here we are, and we are here with this message. Number 41, so denominations will never see it. He shows her, and she receives it, she never doubts it. Can you see what lays between the lines? Amen. When you take those seals, brother, there's mysteries laying between the lines and only he can reveal it to his beloved bride. God bless you. God bless you and God bless you. It's the word you need to take the rapture with it. Amen. You need to accept the word that does it. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Brother, and can we just stand and turn with me to number 48? We'll sing that lovely hymn. There's never been a day like this day, brother. Man. There's never been a day like this day.
Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the message, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And my time's up now. I've introduced you to him. Hallelujah. I must decrease now. I must go off the scene. You'll take over from here. The millennium will be on. <laughs> and the time is hand.